everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, two teams come off tough losses a week ago and want to turn things back around today. It's the Seahawks going up against the Panthers. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And we welcome all of our viewers inside a place that the folks around here like to call the vault. And that's Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Today, we've got a Week 13 matchup for you here between the Seattle Seahawks and the Carolina Panthers. The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in week 13. And oh, he kicked it out of bounds. That's a big penalty. And this is where the rest of the team turns and stares at the kicker and says, You have one job, execute it. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Stewart. And he's going to be stopped here on this first play as he gets it to the line of scrimmage and no more. Flex round! Flex round! Let's go! He'll look to throw. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots in, on the field that you have to cover, and when the offense finds an area that you're not in, that's where they throw the football. Now Stewart on first down. Stays on his feet. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. I thought guys that were over 30 weren't supposed to run the football this well in the National Football League. How about that veteran leadership? A big-time run combined with some nice blocking by his offensive line, showing that the ins and outs of being a veteran still has his place in this league. Let's his go. odometer is not totally turned over yet. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. There's a carry now for Mike Gillisley. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. And the quarterback, he's got some big threats at wideout. And they seem to get bigger all the time, don't they, Brandon? Every time I look out and watch a game, we're getting these bigger, more athletic, acrobatic receivers. We have some today. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. Fighting a safety valve here. That's complete. That one good for 17 yards. And now they've got it first and goal. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Looks like the defense in press coverage Ohio. here. Let's go. Red, 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 red. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. They run here with Stewart. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only here one word comes to red, mind for Ohio. me, and that's overwhelmed. Ohio because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. 
He'll drop to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. Devin Funches, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Panthers are going to take a first quarter lead. And this will be good to give the Panthers a 7-0 lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. C.J. Prosez. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Tackle made by K1 Short. And this offense often hinges on one of the best tight ends in the league, and that's Jimmy Graham. I think he made up for lost time when he got to the NFL because in college he was mainly a basketball player, a defender who couldn't score. Now he's flipped it around in the NFL. Every time he touches the ball, he's a threat to score. And they talked about how important the passing game was going to be against that defensive look. Good job there going to the air for the first down. It's all about preparation. It's all about planning. And then it's about execution. So they put it all together in practice. Okay, this is what we think we're going to see. This is how they get to it. And then when the game comes, read it and attack it. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner and the tackle was there right away for a loss of yardage. Now Wilson on second down. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. And he was able to find a very soft spot in that zone coverage. I love that term, Brandon. That soft spot where you find the open area, set up, and catch the football before the hard collision comes afterwards. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Going down the middle, and it's complete. A good pick up there, a 22. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, we talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. His throw caught at about the five. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. They'll run it. This is pro size. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. C.J. Prosize with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense and they exploited them the last time out let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive and we'll see if they can do just that let's go. Brandon, looking to jam go. the receivers let's at the go. line here press coverage look defensively 
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Most like that at just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. Try again with the arm here on second down. It's hauled in by Devin Smith. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. They've got a third down and a yard to start things out. Here we go! Brandon, 38! Cut. They'll look to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. The intended target that time was Jonathan Stewart. And fourth down coming up. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> if you love pressure, we'll, I see, love we'll it. see if they dial it up this drive. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. On second down, Wilson. Eluding the pressure right. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tucking in run time, and he picks up a first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Trey Boston. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with a game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They start on the ground. This is Stewart on first. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Second down, eight. They'll come out in the pistol. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that'll make it third down. I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. 
Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> a nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Stewart on the counter, able to get away. That's why he keeps the legs churning. And he got blown up, losing yardage on the play back at the 44. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? And <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line, but how about that defensive front creating a go. new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And that'll be incomplete. And a big face mask penalty here, 15 yards. You never want to get your hands up in the face mask area because your fingers can get tangled up there, and that can hurt you as a player. to throw it he's got time he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete we know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Flex round! Flex round! Flex round! That's good! They'll run it now out of the gun. Shreds the tackle. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. And the Seahawks add a couple of extra DBs going with the dime look here. Indeed, six on the field. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. And caught left side, Olsen. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. And time for us to take a break here in the booth. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And his kick here is good. And they take the lead here now at 10 to seven. So it goes down as an eight play drive and they cap it with the field goal. Yeah, they were able to pick up a few first downs along the way, but they couldn't keep the momentum going all the way into the end zone. The Carolina kick team is out there, ready to go, and they kick this one away. This is taken near the 13. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They go back to the air here after the INT. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. 15 yards through the air on a first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, 
that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Surveying the field, and it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran that one. Nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is in running back drop. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. Here's Wilson. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. There are a good number of coaches that any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. On third down, Wilson. Flush to his right. Room here to run. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And he did get it back, I do. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. And the Panthers coming out now. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the all-pro free safety, Earl Thomas. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. Earl Thomas, a defensive guy that can make things happen. Arguably the best center fielder in the game today. He patrols the middle of the field with speed and with fury. Now Wilson got a man, and he hits him in stride. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. On second down, Wilson. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Carolina getting set to take the field. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He'll rifle this one. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And got his man complete. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They go play action here on first down. He's got his man on the crossing route. 
And down inside the 15 he goes. And never mind, Larry. These two teams apparently anxious to get back at it. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. As Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Seven yards on the pick up there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Again, they run. Again, it's pro size. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. On first down, pro size. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make the play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. Wilson turns and gives to Procise. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And that's a good sign right there as we start the third quarter. Because in the first half, not much space to run the football. And as we go into the half, we often think to ourselves, all right, what's the adjustment? What do they have to do? You know what a lot of the adjustments are? No adjustments. You know the game plan. I've been working on it all week. Maybe a little tweak here or there, a little bit better blocking. And now you're establishing the running game. Here's Wilson. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Michael Pruitt, his second touchdown on the season. And the Seahawks are going to retake the lead. And his kick is right through. To the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive, there he hits the reliable target. They'll look to throw now on first down. Smith catches left side. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. 
I know we just saw a nice throwing catch, but how about the big guys up front they buying that time? time? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. They created time and allowed the space to happen, and it turned into a really nice play. Here we go! Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And this one's incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target, and it's third and five. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. Come on, let's go! One. They'll look to throw again. Gets it to Benjamin. It's caught. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic. So anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even add it a little extra at the end with a short run. Flex round! Flex round! Here we go! Round. One, One. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Come on, let's go! Brand, flex round! Flex round! Flex round! Flex round! And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. They'll drop the throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. Right, dropping go. eight. Where are you going to go with the football? Let's go. Round three. Right. Flex round. Flex round. Flex round. Right. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And that one incomplete. Had some position, but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. Here's the Panthers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. It's a high kick and hit pretty well. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. They come out five wide. Three of them to the right side. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. It's caught outright by Graham. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. It is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do, and it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up on the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. and 10 it's Wilson he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete 
Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it, an in route, going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. Second and ten now, Wilson. This complete to Lockett. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? Wilson going to hand it to Cronsize. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Complete. Richardson has it. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And they're definitely showing blitz here. There's Wilson. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowler Luke Kinkley that picks it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And last time out there to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football oh, away. Go. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But... Gonna be a safety. And the defensive penetration there blew that play up and got him two points. How about how they got off at the snap of the football, got upfield into the backfield, and created the big play? That's the key to everything. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And three interceptions in this game. And I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh man, I can't throw four. No, and what's interesting is, what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence? Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. On second down, here's Wilson. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Now it's Wilson. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. And they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. Give him 13 on the pick up there. And it'll be first down, Panthers. So here we go, first and 10 now. Stewart is the load set back. And he'll get it up the middle. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. 
And this defense continues to give them fits. They just can't get really anything going on the ground, can they? I love the theme that you just Let's brought go. up. This defense has been tough all game long against the run. We just saw another example of it there. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to loft one deep left side here. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said go. forget the underneath Let's route. Go. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, Let's incomplete. Go. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down game. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Let's go! Red, red, red. Let's go. Let's go. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. Fresh set of downs here. Here we go. One, nine. Back to throw. And he slings one that's incomplete. They were looking to get it to Kelvin Benjamin there. And now it's second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Now a 10th carry for Jonathan Stewart. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a Not just a big, big man, big, a huge man. Big, big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> The defensive coordinator came into this game with a plan to get to the quarterback with whatever type of pressure is necessary. It's working to perfection for him today. So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. Try it here. He's back to throw. And they hit him as he throws as this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Incomplete. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They have the lead. Still a one possession game, but the defense got to stop. They've got the football now. Just salted away, right? Exactly. That's all the defense is counting on from their offense. They did their job in a big way. You know they're over on the sidelines now starting to take their tape off and, hey, we've done this thing. The offense has to put it away, and that means and now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Seven yards to go on second down. They come out here in the eye. Now Wilson. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. The Panthers are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Offense coming up, needing two yards on third down. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. 
Here's Wilson. Wide open receiver complete. And oh, at the end of it, he stripped. Ball comes loose. And it's picked up by the Panthers. A crazy sequence here. A huge game that time, but it still leaves him well short for fourth down. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Well, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. They'll look to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowl safety cam chancellor. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Now, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So, in other words, someone got lucky because <laughs> they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out here and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Finding time. This will be caught inside the 10. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage if he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl with Luke Kinkley that picks it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Carolina getting set to take the field. Critical condition here, obviously. Got to hope to get something quick right and then maybe take that shot deep. And once they do take the big shot, You've got to worry on defense. Of course, no one getting behind the defense to make it an easy throw. But nowadays, it's not just the ball being tipped in the air and people in the end zone in a cluster. It's that guy that's short of yep. the end zone who comes up and ends up making the play because he goes unguarded. So there's a lot to think about if you're playing defense in this situation. We'll see if they can cover all their bases. over we'll step aside offense comes to the line now first and ten shot they'll look to throw oh he's got a man wide open complete well going into the final play of this game they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end but they couldn't get it done however we were treated to really a spectacular affair 